as he yet spoke, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with a great multitude and with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the ancients of the people. And he that betrayeth him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that is he, hold him fast. And forthwith coming to Jesus, he said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, whereto art thou come? Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and held him. Words taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the history of the world, there has never been a more shameful betrayal. Listen to Venerable Mother Mary of Agreda from the mystical city of God. In this one act of treason, Judas committed so many and such formidable sins that it is impossible to fathom their immensity. For he was treacherous, murderous, sacrilegious, ungrateful, inhuman, disobedient, false, lying, impious, and unequaled in hypocrisy. And all this was included in one and the same crime, perpetuated against the person of God's made man. Thank you, Mother Mary of Agreda. Our Lord said of Judas, it would have been better that he had not been born. He also called him the son of perdition. So, if there is to be perdition, he is the firstborn and its greatest son, damn. That's the point. The son of perdition. Once again, in the history of the world, there has never been a more shameful betrayal. When we examine the various betrayals down through history, we will find a pattern that Judas fits. We say, then, this pattern is very simple. It takes a Judas, an insider, a friend, turning, traitor, to initiate a passion. It takes a Judas to initiate a passion. The patriarch Joseph in the Old Testament, he was betrayed by his brothers and he entered into a passion. He was sold into slavery and put into jail even at one time. Ahithophel, the counselor of King David, he betrayed him in counseling Absalom to rise up and kill his king and father. This is David's counselor. David and the whole country entered into a passion, a civil war. Like Judas, Ahithophel hanged himself. In ancient Rome, Brutus and Cassius betrayed Julius Caesar, causing renewed civil wars to break out among the Romans, a sort of passion tide. Not surprisingly, both Brutus and Cassius later committed suicide. Dante places all three of the traitors, Judas, Brutus, and Cassius, at the very bottom of hell in the mouth of Satan, being devoured over and over, as it were, munched on for all eternity at the very center of the earth. St. Joan of Arc, she seemed unstoppable. She steamrolled a path for the crown prince to be made king at Reims. In short two months in the Hundred Years' War, turning the tides. It was a miracle. But she let it be known the only thing she feared was treachery. And she knew it was going to happen. She's like Bernadette. The only thing Bernadette feared? Bad Catholics. That's what she feared. Bad Catholics. And it came to pass for St. Joan at Compiègne, just as she foretold. They closed the gates on her too quickly, thereby allowing her to be captured. Only then did she enter into her passion and death, from which France was eventually freed from the English rule, ending the Hundred Years' War. Her friends basically handed her over to the enemy. Now think about it. Would all the efforts of the elders, the high priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, they could not bring about over years 
The kiss of Judas accomplished in one night. What the English and the Burgundians could not do to Joan over months and months of effort, one of her own could do and did. There are important and deep lessons here on at least two levels. Namely, for the church as a whole, there's a lesson. And for the second lesson is for us as her members. So the church is immortal. That's the first lesson. The church is immortal. She cannot be put to death. She can be betrayed, but she cannot be put to death. St. Catherine of Siena said it like this. The sweet spouse of Christ, which is the church, has so much life in her that no one can do her to death. There's no bomb big enough, sword big enough, or anything big enough to take her out. It can't be done. It's the promise of our Lord. The spouse of Christ has so much life in her that no one can do her to death. Yet, she has passed through many dark and trying times, many passion tides in the history of the church. How so? How did this happen? Well, each time she was betrayed by her own, and nearly, nearly every heretic and initiator of trial for Holy Mother Church has been one of her own a bishop, a priest, or a king. Arius was a priest. Martin Luther was a religious and a priest. King Henry VIII of England. Now we're in one of those moments now. We're in a passion tide for the church. I think we feel that. What's going on? We're suffering and bleeding from many wounds. Who doesn't know a victim of the passion? Someone who ran away and doesn't want to be Catholic anymore. There must be a Judas somewhere, maybe more than one, betraying our Holy Mother. They say there is one in every twelve. Our dear Lord picked Judas to show us, and every twelve, there's a traitor. And we have to be on our guard not to become that traitor. In any case, may we not be surprised nor scandalized, but rather seek to be ever more faithful and willing to make reparation for these Judases that are not wanting. We have been here before. The church has passed through these sorts of passion tides heretofore. She's passed through them before, but the church cannot die. You are in the right place. The ship cannot be sunk. Stay on board. That's the church. What about ourselves? Well, then there's our own soul, isn't there? After baptism, the faithful soul fortified by the sacraments and regular pious exercises, study of the faith. This soul is truly a fortress, hard to penetrate. It is not the devil who brings down such souls. No, as the imitation of Christ says, we ourselves are our own worst enemies. The devil can only use us, that is, our faults and inordinate desires and affections against us. It's ourselves exposing our, our minds, our eyes, our senses to evil and inordinate things that ultimately will bring us down. The devil just uses that against us. Once again, a faithful soul fortified by the sacraments, regular pious spiritual exercises and study is a fortress. He can't easily penetrate at all. Well armed. Thus, we betray Christ inside. We kill him by committing mortal sin. We are the traitors. And this initiates both spiritual and physical trials in our life. The saints realize that. And when something went wrong, they say, it's my fault. I deserve this for all my sins. They didn't say it's because of that guy, because of that guy, or because of that guy. They looked right here. I did this to myself through my sins. Oh, 
just think about it. What sorrow we must have caused the sacred heart of Jesus by our first sin. The loss of our innocence. How that sin more than any other must have hurt him. Kiss me, Judas. Call me friend and betray me thus. This is the reason that St. Philip Neri would say every day, Watch out for Philip today, Lord, because he will betray thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.